Hi, I'm Ingrid and I just wanted to make this video to tell you all about how I made my first graphic novel. I first came to YouTube to learn how to do this very thing, but it was spread out across a lot of different resources, so I figured why not make one single video that details my very particular process. I'll insert some timestamps if you want to skip around. I have the feeling that this is going to be kind of a long video, but I hope you enjoy it. I got started on this graphic novel a few years ago. I had completed my first webcomic called Secret Black Woman, and it sort of got me started in a drawing in a digital process, but it was an autobiographical work about being mixed race in America. And after a while, especially in Trump's America, I felt like there was no nuance left for uh, autobiographies about race. <laughs> I really wanted to kind of use what I learned in that process and, and make a more sustained story and a more cohesive work of fiction. And I thought a graphic novel would be the best way of approaching that. The graphic novel is about a young woman named Mara. Oh my God, my rabbit is drinking in the background. Can you hear that? So the graphic novel is about a young woman named Mara whose fiance passes away after a really long, excruciating illness but then he comes back to life to live with her. In, in general, it's a horror romance story. I'd say it's more spooky than scary, but it's about dealing with the loss of someone you love in real time. In college, I had tried in the past to like write a zombie horror story that was a, like a weird concept album that I had written and like made music for. Um, but I think ultimately like this this idea in my head made more sense in a visual medium so that's that's really where this started well, my process first started with a kind of stream of consciousness style of illustration I had all of these scenes and vignettes and ideas in my head for a story but they didn't all kind of come together I had characters that I had imagined I had places and scenarios and at the end of this drawing process which I, I don't recommend anyone take my same approach at the end of this process I had about 114 pages of penciled artwork that I roughly collected into a book it did not hold together as an idea <laughs> it barely held together as a book and, and even though I had you know spent this flurry of productivity trying to create this thing I wasn't really proud of it and I knew it wasn't in a place that I wanted to take over the finish line so it was at that point that I asked for help. A big fear of mine too was um, something called Dunning-Kruger. And what Dunning-Kruger is, it's a phenomenon in which very inexperienced people don't know that they're bad at things essentially. And I, I didn't want to be a victim of my own Dunning-Kruger. And I didn't know what I didn't know, but I knew that I wasn't satisfied with all of this work I had produced. Uh, I asked a coworker friend who I knew had done some podcasting and had um, helped interview some comic artists in, that were local to the area. And one of them she introduced me to was named Mildred, who writes a multi-volume magical girl series called Agents of the Realm. And I came to Mildred and I said, hey, look, I, I would love to pay you to help me figure out how to take this idea in my head and take it over the finish line. With my story that was totally in a genre that she didn't love, it kind of helped put us in an area where she was able to give me extremely like brutal feedback. And it ended up being, there's nuggets of something here. Ultimately, you need to burn this down and start it again with structure. So that was the approach from just that ideation period into actual story writing and story building. I also kind of applied a project product management approach to the outline of my story. So instead of doing a Google Doc, I threw everything into Trello. And in Trello, I set up a few different boards that described the beginning, middle, and end of my book. And then within each of those sections, create their own beginning, middle, and end. And this helped me really reassess which scenes actually helped me move the story forward, as opposed to just being like kooky ideas that I was really attached to. But in the end, probably they didn't serve the story, so they were cut. Back in college, I used to be an illustrator or an artist for the Harvard Lampoon. And in those days, um, I was like a broke college student and I couldn't afford 
like super fancy drawing software, drawing equipment, like a, you know, Wacom Cintiq or whatever. So I was doing everything by hand, the traditional way, you know, doing a sketch on a piece of board or paper and then inking that really painstakingly and applying watercolors and color. And if you screwed up, you'd have to start over again. So I think doing that to start really helped. But when I got a little bit more money, I invested in an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil. I did this all with a full-time job and I fit drawing in wherever I could and having the iPad Pro made it really easy for me to kind of, you know, do some flatting and adding some color while I was riding the train where it was too shaky to maybe like do line work. So I started my entire digital process in Procreate, first with Secret Black Woman, and then I used the, basically the same process to draw in Procreate. Even the tool itself evolved and it got more sophisticated, so I was able to do things in there that I couldn't before. So I could draw comic panels and snap them perfectly to a grid. I could uh, add perspective where I needed to, to make realistic scenes and backgrounds. Um, and then I could take basic sketches and build on top of them to then ink and color uh, the novel and then also add text balloons and things. So the entire thing I built in one application with one device um, and compared to you know what the Wacom would have cost me at a much lower price. And a few Apple Pencils. <laughs> I went through a lot of Apple Pencils. like. It's embarrassing how many Apple pencils I went through. They're really expensive. Um, get a case. If you draw outside, like don't lose sight of that puppy. I feel like they're designed to be lost. Yeah. They don't have a roll stop. Uh, in terms of resources and things that I think were really valuable, there were books that I really loved. In particular, I loved Scott McCloud's like, entire book series about the making of comics and um, the theory of comics as a medium. I think that was just just excellent to put me in that frame of mind and understand how to use panels and pages to assemble a story and a lot of like pitfalls to avoid as well but in terms of lettering and coloring like there was a universe of stuff that i really needed to ramp up on and one of my favorite youtubers who talks about coloring is k michael russell and i highly highly recommend all of his videos and his courses or just even just watching him was extremely instructive and he gets into all of the details my drawing style is is very muted i i took inspiration from a lot of flat fashion images from like ito shinsui was someone i really loved and like like whistler and um doing a lot of like really soft, soft people. And I wasn't really looking in the like Marvel comics, DC world, but it was helpful to look at how those people drew and colored to know what I was reacting against or what I was doing and making more decisions about why I didn't take that same approach. And the more you know about what tools are available to you, the more deliberate you can be in the choices that you make. And I learned that too, is like being a designer. As an artist too, it's like so easy to do something by accident and not really have an intention behind it. So, so I highly recommend his channel for that. As I was realizing that I was finishing this work and it was becoming something real that I could share with other people, only then did I start thinking about like, how do I share this? Because it was totally different from the webcomic where I was um, just, you know, putting it out for free and then putting it on social media and telling people when the blog had updated. But for this, you know, cohesive piece of work, it was kind of like, I'm gonna release this in one shot. What will it end up looking like? And what should, what format should it ultimately take? And even though I made it digitally, I, I really want it to be a real thing. Like I wanna come out of this two plus year process of making this graphic novel and actually have something to show other people. The approach that I'm taking now is, is gonna be twofold. So I'm gonna do a print run of a few issues and uh, self-publish uh, the whole thing entirely, both in print and digital. I chose to self-publish because I started this thing solo and I like doing things on hard mode, I guess. So it made sense to try and pursue the rest of it by myself. I think part of what I want to do with this is not only learn how to independently create something, but also how to independently distribute something. So I have started my own business. I'm now an LLC that's registered in Massachusetts. I'll be buying ISBNs so that I can like publish books and I'll also be exploring taking my book out in printed format to 
comic shops and tabling at conventions and just generally trying to figure out how to distribute something that I've made on my own. I didn't have to take this approach. I could probably, you know, work with something like Ingram Spark or Amazon or try and get an agent and have someone else distribute. But to me, I think with the time that I've invested in this, I feel like there's still so much more to learn about all parts of the process and not just the creative parts. Exploring print is also really interesting in terms of process. There are so many ways you can print, whether it's with offset printing, um, where the cost goes way down if you're able to print a huge number of pieces. There's uh, print-on-demand printers like Mixam, um, Kablam for other comic artists, where the costs are, are kind of high, but you can keep it low by doing a very low print run. And usually these people have really low minimums, so that's where I'm currently starting. I'm gonna do a small print run with a print-on-demand service and doing digital printing and also making my book available online. Anyway, I'm so excited to share this with people. Uh, this, this project was like two and a half years in development. It has been just a one-woman project. I've gotten help along the way. I'll, I'll leave all of my resources and things that I leaned on in the description. I'll try to insert them into this video if they fit. Helping others understand and learn their options was something I wanted to do anyway but in general i i'm really proud of do not resuscitate uh, and i can't wait to keep pursuing this and, and trying to make it work i love the stress of productivity <laughs> late into the night so i don't see myself slowing down so i figure um while while i have the energy why not do it and i encourage anyone who has been thinking about a project in the back of their head like just try it Speaking as someone from the other side, like it is totally possible. That about does it for this video. Feel free to go to this website to shop my comics. Both Do Not Resuscitate and an updated collection of Secret Black Women are available at barona-creative.com. Take care and I'll see you the next time I do something new, I hope. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> 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 um,